Hey, this is Michael Anthony right here, and you are watching exclusively Van Halen on the Johnny Bean TV. Keep it there. Woo! It's like I boosted my headphone volume. In the chat, let us know how the volume is. Hey now, welcome everybody, cheers. Everybody, welcome. This is exclusively Van Halen, the weekly EVH show. Almost a daily show, really. I mean, there's there's just something every day around here, so make sure you like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Music Therapy Labs is here, everyone. What's up, everybody? Thank you for having me again, Johnny. Of course, man. It's so wonderful to hang out with you. Ah. It was a good time. Dude, well, see, we're we're actual friends, and we actually know each other in real yeah. life. So, I, I mean, it's it's just it's just an it's awesome, a, it's a good thing. It's a very special, yeah. special thing. Welcome, everybody. It is June twenty fourth, twenty twenty two, eight ten p.m. Eastern, five ten Pacific, out here in California, West Coast, the best coast, North Bay, Santa North Cruz. <laughs> yeah, <Bay>. man. <laughs> Yes, East Bay in the uh, house. Giants, but I'm wearing my Giants hat. <laughs> there you go. The there you go, man. Oh, so, man. hey, welcome, everybody. And uh, let's start this right. Let's say hello yeah. to the top tier of channel members here on Johnny Bean TV, here on YouTube. We have channel membership. This show, this channel runs on channel membership. It runs on donations. And the top tier of channel membership are the executive producers. And they are Dave Ennis, Vinyl Freak 5150, Mike Neese, Music Therapy Laz. There you are. Yo. Majestic PB&J Cat, Wayno, Stevo 5150, False Flag, who I was talking to earlier, Sherman Callahan, who I met down at the NAMM show, Andy Carson, Michael B., R. Habs, Warlag, The Chad, Lawrence Christensen, Lenny Lou and Mary, James Gum, John Moronic, Paul Martin Woods, Stephen Franklin, Fabulous Disaster, Michael Smith, The Captain, Thomas Santiago, Joe Christian, Jim Ray Hawkins, David Allen Wright, and Steve Carmichael. Steve Carmichael. <laughs> they are the executive producers here on Johnny Bean TV. They are the top tier of channel membership. Smash that join button. Become a channel member. Check it out. You get exclusive content. Actually, you guys got something exclusive today. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've seen it yet, Laz, but you guys oh. got a special channel member only video only for you guys. Didn't even know. <laughs> so make working. sure. So, yeah. <laughs> So channel members, I just woke up five minutes ago. Yeah. Channel members, <laughs> check that out. You got a special video for you guys today. Kind of a preview, actually. A preview of this Sunday's show. Ooh. Sundays here on Johnny Bean TV, we have what's called the Sunday Night String Chain Show. Uh, if I can find the card. There it is. Oh, I think I know what it's about. And I, I did uh, I did a little, little test video today for you guys, mm -hmm. demonstrating uh, some pretty cool stuff. So tune in this Sunday night, 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific, Sundays, the Sunday Night String Chain Show. Uh, let's see, what else do we do we normally uh, normally do here? If you'd like to help support this channel and support these shows, especially while we're live, any super chats will change the color of the lights in the guitar noir. Special feature, you'll only see it here on Johnny Bean TV. It's science, it's it's magical. <laughs> and if you'd like to help support the channel, support these shows while we're live, any super chats, any donations towards the channel will change these lights in real time to the, the 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 tier the, the the of the super chat that you choose so there's some fun for you right there cool fun there is fun have fun change the lights 
Joe Hervey, become a channel member and, and click on that video. You'll 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 see you'll see you'll see what it is. Uh, let's see. If you'd like to text uh, the show or maybe call in, maybe we'll take your call. 415-952-3263 is the number, and you can connect that with WhatsApp. We can become WhatsApp friends. Oh, so precious. Friends. 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 <laughs> we're, we're also live on Facebook, Johnny Bean TV Facebook page, where we have Facebook stars, a digital gift that helps in the production of these shows. And we're also live in the exclusively Van Halen group, just under 63,000 members. That group is going crazy. So much awesomeness going on over there. Uh, EVH Gear Fans Live group, EVH Gear Live page, and Johnny Bean TV group, and my personal profile, where I'm very, very close to the 5K mark. So if you want to be Facebook friends, send me a message if you send me a friend request. And you can catch Johnny Bean basically everywhere on the internet. Uh, we are on YouTube, of course, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, in the podcast world. Uh, let's see, what else? Amazon Influencers, I'm starting a show uh, over there. And uh, TikTok, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, I've got music just everywhere. Uh, Twitch, Twitter, you name it, you name it, we're there. So actually, you can just go to johnnybean.link. There you go. And follow us, follow us over there. Uh, what else do we normally do here? Uh, reviews. You can leave a review for Johnny Bean TV about this channel, about these shows, about these videos. Just go to Google. Just type in uh, uh, Johnny Bean TV, and you, you can just leave a, a review. Or I might be able to give you the link right here if I can spell. There we go. Hey, Robert Ranford, I see you, man. I see you. And then uh, let's see. More support. You can always use the support. Uh, it's not free doing this stuff. You can support the channel with super thanks on any previously recorded video. Just look for that little icon that's being pointed at right there, and you can, you can drop a, uh, a super thanks and help support the channel and these shows. And finally, I know it's been a couple years, but uh, there is merchandise available. <laughs> I just don't. I never mention it. Thank you again to Cobra Kai Platoon for the awesome artwork and uh -huh. awesome graphics. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, we have t-shirts, we have mugs, we have caps, we have, uh, onesies. I mean, you, uh, you, do you know, really have onesies. We do. We do have onesies, but not in oh. your size. Oh man. Is it like Ned size only? Yeah. Yeah. We have Ned size onesies <laughs> and these shirts, they're very comfortable. I mean, I, I, wear I have one. I, I almost wore mine, but I wore this one as you know, for a reason because, I'm a fan of Pete Thorne since his birthday today. So happy birthday. Oh, happy Pete birthday, Thorne. Pete Thorne. Roller, but you are. Happy birthday, man. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Dude, it's everybody's birthdays lately. It's everyone's a June baby. That's cool. It's 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 craziness. <laughs> it's Even wild. my wife she had her birthday too. Oh man. That's and you've why been I was having, off today. You've been having like a birthday weekend or, or week or something. Well, normally it's like a three week birthday extravaganza in my family because my brother, my niece, my cousin, my cousin's kids. Uh, there's like about 10 birthdays in June. It's like all the all the wow. family was getting busy, you know, when the winter hit. <laughs> Whoops. Run button. Mm. There anyway, you go. A yeah, so bunch of June babies. There we go. I think go. it's the pumpkin pie. See, right around pumpkin pie time, something in that pumpkin pie gets people busy. Either that, or they're at home on Thanksgiving. More like, more they, like they pumpkin, pumpkin time. pie. <laughs> pumpkin pumpkin pie. Everybody's at home pumping pie. <laughs> no, there is. There's probably some Afro. <laughs> there's some Afro hey, look, oh look at this. Oh my god! You got to see this. This is actually supposed to be pumpkin. See that? See that little icon right there? Mm-hmm. Now tell me if this sounds like a pumpkin. Oh my god! Wait a minute, you're you're. Away. I think it's supposed to be like pumpkins being. I don't know what it. What? How? How is that a pumpkin I, sound? I don't know what that is. It should be like a ghoul sound or something. There is a witch sound here. There you go. And then there's there this one, go. my favorite. <laughs> craziness r2r3 lock and nut as a johnny bean shirt and mug as johnny well, bean r2r3 buys my merch and that's yeah. not funny hang on yeah, r2r3 dude you've been a long time supporter yeah man 
Thank you so much, R2. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. Let me see. Who's here? We have Everybody Wants everybody Some. Wants Check out some. Everybody Wants Some, the Van Halen tribute. Check them out. Check them out. Ola, hey, man. Dudes. Good to see you, man. I met Good one of their relatives, you. either an auntie or a mom or something that works at a paint store. And she said something about you guys. That whatever, whoever is um, my kid, everybody wants my them. Nephew, or yeah, somebody from Everyone Wants Them uh, band. Everyone wants them. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody, everybody wants them. Everybody. Does. Everybody. Everybody <laughs> wants them. <laughs> Who doesn't want some? Yeah, Mike Olson <laughs> watched all the EVH Pastina videos. Great footage, Laz and Johnny. Thank you so much, and thank you for the the super chat, Mike Olson. Thank you. Yeah, as you guys know. I did it live. You know, we were live for literally three hours that day down that in Pasadena. We went from Pasadena <laughs> to to where? We stayed around Pasadena, then we went to Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood. Um, and and it was it was craziness. We but, drove, uh, drove through that one hilly street that took us by accident by the Van Halen house, mm -hmm. the old one. Mike Olson, thank you so much. And yeah, Laz, he just uploaded his videos yesterday, yeah. I think, last night. So, so check those out. I didn't do out. my show. I, I, I couldn't do my show, but I, I was able to get those pumped out. So people had something to watch. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I was watching them. I saw them. It was fun being there actually, but taking everyone along for the ride was cool. I, I think that's, what's cool about this forum and being able to like share all this stuff with people. Cause some of these people will never get to go to that place, you know, right. and we gave them a piece of that and it made me feel good to, not okay. to see it and be part of it myself with you, the most perfect guide for any of that kind of stuff down there in Van. Halen, I've, you know? I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd been to all, the, I'd been to all those places. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that, that's not the right code. Anyway, you guys, on on playback, there'll be a, there'll be a card right up there for the uh, the video that that I did, and uh, I'll throw Laz's videos in there as well. Oh man, thanks. Um. Oh, you got it. But hey, uh, yeah, it was a great time. It was awesome. So uh, let's see, who do we have here tonight? We got Robert Ranford. We got R2R3 Locky Nut. We got Music Therapy Laz, of course. We got Mike Olson. We got Symmetry. We got Facebook User Live Trips. Hey, if you're watching on Facebook, mention your name so, so we uh, can see who you are. We got Vista Light 1972. We got Joe Hervey 84. We got Halface. Everybody wants some, of course. You guys, check them out. Check them out. <coughs> Facebook user, Dan of New Jersey. Let's see. Facebook user. <laughs> Sorry about the noise. Something fell. Uh, let's see. I'm scrolling. G. Butchnoff. Actually, actually, this this is. Huh? We got G. Butchnoff. Actually, let's just do this. Let's do it over here. This is how is you it actually Butch do it. Is it Butchnoff or Bushnoff? I think it's Bushnoff. Vista Light, 1972, right. Thomas Santiago, Cemetery, Robert Ranford, Archer R3 Locking Nut, Nightbot, which is me, Music Therapy Laz, Mike Olson, Joe Hervey 84, Janice Lala, Halface, G. Butchnoff, or Bushnoff. Bushnoff. Everybody wants some. Danny of New Jersey, Bo Zeke, and they're just they're just rolling in. Thank you guys for uh, for tuning in tonight. Yeah, man. And don't forget to smash that thumbs up on your way in. It's free subscribing and, is free too and it's awesome subscribing is free as well it costs nothing i don't know why do they cost... call it subscribing because it makes it sound like you have to pay well that's the difference with twitch when you subscribe you do pay you do okay you mm. follow you can follow somebody on twitch for free mm. when you subscribe you're actually supporting them so that's that's the difference well i think they're supporting us just by subscribing so that's mm -hmm. cool, right? Well, just they're by here. even being here. Yeah, just by, just by we got 45 it. people sitting here. Just from that's being awesome. here. Just from being here, we're, we're, we're uh, you guys. Yeah, we've are. got a whole bunch of, there's like how many people at least? 30, we got 45. 45. We got 40, wow, I see 45. We got, we got 45. Yeah, that's that's very close to my real age. A little high, a little high, very but. Close. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Johnny's still trying to keep that, uh, <laughs> the young. Uh huh. Everybody wants them. I need a T-shirt. Everybody wants them. Everybody wants them. If you have a T-shirt, send me your T-shirt. I'll wear it. Send it to me. Send it to me. Just uh, PO Box two three two SoCal California nine five zero seven three is my address. So you can send me. Uh, nice. If you're looking to send T-shirts, I'll take one. Uh. So hey, Laz. You know what today? Well, yeah. okay. You know what, what yesterday? yesterday? You know what yesterday yeah. was? 
It was an anniversary of, of yesterday. The yesterday was the anniversary of Sammy Hagar's "I Never Said Goodbye," featuring Eddie Van Halen on bass. Amazing. Turned thirty-five years old, which is just incredible. I bought that album when it was brand new, so for me to think thirty-five years is unbelievable. Yeah, right. Crazy. I still feel like I'm twenty-something. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, I refuse to accept my age, but I do. I, I am actually proud of my age. I think I've done all right, considering all the crazy stuff I've done and been through. Thank you. Absolutely. I mean, I've gone through so much of this. I've gone through so much of this. Plate glass windows? I've done that. I've, I've not had any of this happen, though. Wow. Well, none of that. None of that. But, uh, you know. Yeah, plenty of this. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I rode in the car with you. <laughs> wow. And then some so, of this happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you you checked out the record uh, today? Yeah, I listened to the whole out? thing twice. It was really great. Yeah, yeah. Some great tracks. That Eagles Fly song uh, makes me want to fly a jet. I want to get in the jet right now and just. Uh huh. Yeah. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> when I was a kid, I wanted to do that. <laughs> cool, cool. So, so what? What? So what? What do you think? What do you think? We'll, well go over the I, we'll go over I, the songs. We'll go over I mean, all that who stuff. Did the but... keyboards in that? Didn't Eddie do keyboards in that then too? Because there's a little bit of keyboards no. in that. No. No, I think that was Jesse Harms. I so think. he just played was, bass, who... and that's it. Because there was one song there that sounded like Eddie playing. The rest of it sounded like Sammy playing what? The most part. Guitar. Playing guitar. Well, that there is kind of an Easter egg. Technically, technically, Eddie said that he didn't even play the guitar for a year while mm. they made this record. Eddie Eddie co produced the record. Cool. It sounds um, great. Yeah. 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 And it's it's, it's thirty five years old, which is still just mm -hmm. amazing to, to think. Um but actually there there is there is an Easter egg. Um Eddie did play bass on on the album. Um, he either used a, uh, a Steinberger headless bass or a Kramer Spectre. Um, actually, no, it wasn't even a Kramer. It was just a, I think it was just a Spectre. Spectre bass, yeah. Spectre it was just bass a Spectre bass. Was the best bases in the world, man. I think. I that's have, like what, that's like what me, Sting yeah. played on the Synchronicity Tour. Oh, cool. Um, Sting played a, a white Spectre bass. Uh, I believe Eddie used either one of those, maybe both. Um, but there actually is an Easter egg where Eddie did play some guitar on this on this record in the chat in the chat if you guys know if you can tell us in the chat what song and what did eddie play on the guitar uh let's see you can uh you can tell us <laughs> <laughs> you can tell us you can guess do you know you can like do you, do, you, do you know i you know i i don't know the word i mean i don't know the songs by part well you but just mentioned there was definitely it. one well i mean there's yeah there's definitely that one that definitely sounds like it's got Eddie's guitar playing it. So the Eagles Fly song, yeah. So yeah. that that's your answer. That's that's my that's my final answer. Okay, let's see what the chat says. Uh, yeah, Everybody Farrington. wants some. Says Farrington. Zim's guitar says I think he played bass. Yes, Dane. Good to yes, see you, man. I was I was watching some Another of your videos. Bass player. A little earlier. Yeah, fellow this bass weekend, player. He's playing from the Whiskey Saturday Dogs. Night. He is? Yeah. Oh, playing the whiskey? About it. Yeah, remember the Saturday night, man, right? Isn't it this right Saturday on. night? He was talking about it on Tuesday. Right on, right on. Close okay. Up, Zim, Dane. Mm, Hal mm. Face. There you go. Eagles Fly was the song that Edward played guitar on. Now, can you guys tell us what he played on the guitar on that song? What do you mean? Like what chords? Because I only know a C chord, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you didn't know the C chord. I know it now because it's the one thing you taught me on the guitar. It's well, technically, chord. anything you play down there, if you're looking, it's a C chord because you see it. Ah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, it's more like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, Zims is pumping out some great videos, Mike Olson. Absolutely. Zims is, yeah, he's kicking ass with his videos. Right on, man. Yeah. And you yes. are too with that that special one that everyone's gonna see the full on release version of that Sunday. But that that was cool. I 
I watched it um, with uh, my earpiece in my behind here, and I have like a little mini earbud in there, and I was able to watch it while you were saying hi to everyone in the chat, and, and that was cool, man. I don't know if mm -hmm. you can see what I got behind my uh, my left shoulder here. Mm -hmm. see see what I see that. It's going to go see right that. into there on Sunday morning's Guitar Mod Squad. Oh, live, wow. Live installation. You know how easy it is. It's easy. Right on. Janice saw the vids. Right on, Janice. Janice saw the vids. Right on, Janice. Yeah, yeah. So hey, Sammy Hagar, I never said goodbye. Let's see, what what can we tell you about this? It's been thirty five years. Um, Laz, uh, for the first for the first time today, heard it right. Yeah, all the way through. I, I mean, sent, I've heard those songs before. I've heard a couple of those songs before. At least two mm -hmm. of them I recognized. Definitely the mm -hmm. Eagle Fly one. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know that Eddie played bass on it. I could tell that, you know, Sammy played guitar through most of it. And then I could totally tell that Eddie was playing guitar somewhere in there. And I thought that's cool about Eddie that he would do a, you know, he would play on a Sammy album, right? A lot of bands don't do that kind of thing. They don't support each other that same way. And even though they had their falling out later, but, you know, that's awesome that they, they supported each other that way. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. Not knowing very much about it, you know, talk about it, Johnny. You know everything about this album, I'm sure. <laughs> I do, actually. I have it sitting. It used to sit right over here. I think it's it's in this other room here. I do have it on cool. vinyl. Um, and Bozik says, was the, sound, was the song Hands and Knees on that album, too? The music video for that was funny. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think that's yes. Familiar, yeah. The song Hands and Knees was, mm -hmm. is on I Never Said Goodbye. And there is a music video for that that does feature the members of Van Halen. And uh, a couple things I can tell you about that. Um, part of it was filmed uh, at Sammy and Eddie's. They used to live right next door to each other in Malibu. And so the very beginning of the video, you see Sammy and Eddie together. And then you see Michael and then you see Alex. And then Sammy basically builds a bunch of, bunch of robots because he wants to jam. Everybody else is like, nah, it's two o'clock and went back to sleep. You know, Alex was jamming out. Mike, you know, his dog got hit by a car, so he had to take him to the vet. All kinds of craziness <laughs> was happening. Wow. So Sammy basically builds these robots and jams, jams out with them. And then at the end of the video, I won't spoil it. You guys can check it out. You guys can check that it out. That sounds cool. Yeah. Um, but, I didn't get to uh, watch those. I want to watch the videos now. I'll probably watch you'll have to watch tonight. it. You'll have to watch it. And hey, if somebody watching this, if you're a member of the Discord, feel free to post the video in the, in the Discord for everybody to see under the Van Halen videos section. Let's see, C O R D Discord. There we go. There's a link in the chat. Uh, yeah, that actually that video for for uh, for hands and knees, I actually used to have on a promotional Warner Brothers. No, it wasn't uh, Geffen. It was Geffen Records. Geffen I, Records. I, I had it on a, on a, on a Geffen Records um, promotional VHS tape that I just happened to find at Amoeba Music in Berkeley. This was back in the, sometime mm. in the early, mid-90s. I found this thing. I'm like, what's that? Bought it, brought it home. Couldn't believe what I saw. I'd never seen it everywhere. I mean, it was the craziest, craziest thing. Um, but very cool video. You guys will definitely have to have to check it out. Um, I think but... Sammy was way ahead of his time when it came to building, like, obviously a sexy robot for the himself. <laughs> a sexy robot building for robots and ja jamming, <laughs> jamming along with he was a, you know he was ahead of his the time robots. They're building those things now, probably in China. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, I'm sure they are, Johnny. <laughs> they might be. Oh man, bionic babes. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> How come that's not the right thing? Ah, I was going to show you guys something, but for some reason. Oops, sorry. That's the wrong button. There's the button that I wanted. Let me see. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just show you guys a couple. Uh, Man, we truly live in a, a special time that we can actually get access to these things so easily. Mm -hmm. You know? When we were kids, Johnny, I mean, you know you you dreamed of seeing these guys uh play something on mtv or live if you're lucky yeah i remember that one 
that's well, that's that's it then. That's hands yeah. and knees. That's the video. So, so you got right. Sammy Hagar basically asleep on his porch. I don't know what yeah. he's doing, but uh, <laughs> he calls over to to Eddie. Eddie's next door. He's like he's like Eddie. He's yeah, like, come on, let's phone. jam. Eddie's next door. He's like, it's two o'clock. I'm going back to bed. Okay, go afternoon. go out. So he, so he shuts the window. <laughs> Not in the evening. In the uh, Sam- afternoon. <laughs> yeah, two in the afternoon. Sammy calls um, Alex, but Alex is busy jamming at fifty one fifty because the the uh, the voice uh, uh, record uh, yeah. phone yeah. recorder says fifty one fifty, and then so he, he leaves a, a message for him, and then basically Sammy. From there, he calls Michael Anthony. <laughs> I remember the white phone. I couldn't remember if it was a cordless, like Miami Vice phone, like that, or if it was like one of the long yeah. cord, coily cord ones. But I remember yeah. it was white. Yeah. yeah so he calls. He calls Michael. Love it. Michael. Michael's like, man, you know, I'd love to jam, but my dog Remy just got hit by a car, so I gotta take him to the <laughs> to the vet. True. So. Uh, and he probably yeah, like, laughs about it after and like makes a face like. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, nice. so, he, so it's not. I don't know. Watch the video. Uh, watch, the watch video. The video you'll again. you'll see. And so from there, Sammy Hagar basically starts making these robots to 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 jam with. He's jamming yeah. out with with these robots. And and uh, that's pretty much the rest of the video. And then actually well, the the end of the, the end of the video. Let me see. The end of the video, Van Halen does show up, and they're like, "Hey, we're here to jam." And Sammy's like, "Oh, I think you guys are a little late." Cause Sammy's like, he's just beat by that point. He's like laying atop all these uh, pads. So out top yeah, because he like tape. smashes his guitar, which actually looks like a Kramer Focus like five thousand or something. I used to have one years ago. I wish I still had it. Anyway, really- that's the that's the the condensed version of of the uh, the music video for Hands and Knees. One of the one of the songs off. I never said goodbye. Laz, actually, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll talk to you about this, man. All right. Did you yeah. actually know that when this album was released, there was no title for it? No, I had no idea, John. That is true. That is true. There was actually, a, I think it was an MTV. I don't yeah. know. It was either MTV or, or there was a contest, actually, to, to name this record. Because early, early pressings of this just said Sammy Hagar. There was no album title. Oh, I'd love to find so, a vinyl version of that somewhere in it. I have one. I ha- Just in the other oh, room, I have one. Yes. It just says Sammy Hager on it. <laughs> so what happened was there was a contest to name this record, and this girl ended up winning the contest. If I could think of, I can think of her name. Um, I can't think of it. But she actually got to go to 5150 and hang out with Van Halen You know, at the studio. She got to sit on, I think, Eddie's motorcycle. All kinds of cool stuff. Years later in the 90s, somehow her and I get connected and I'm buying Van Halen memorabilia from her. Like like, like cassettes and videos and tour oh, books and you name it, like all this cool stuff I actually got from the winner, the person who, who actually named I Never Said Goodbye, this album. That's so cool. It was, it was, it was pretty awesome, man. You know, that was probably the pinnacle time of rock guitar and just rock and roll fun. I mean, that's the thing that people talk about the 80s. Like I was I was by 87, 88 that time. I was already in my 20s Um, and I kind of like stayed away from the whole rock thing. I still loved it, but I, I, you know, I wasn't like into it as much. And the Mm -hmm. thing is, uh, I still went to shows and stuff, though, of course, you know, throughout the 90s even. I just love mm-hmm. any kind of music. But the bottom line is, man, that time was like the best time to be a teenager and like with rock and roll and everything. I mean, I think it was the best. I mean, there's, you know, there's great music out there today still. And there's a lot of, you know, great oh, of fans and all kinds of variety of music and blah, 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 blah. And there's everything. Gen- whatever, everything. Everything you can imagine is out there today. And you can you can get everything. Just that on your was life, like on your phone. the pinnacle of fun times. It was just one big party. Everything was just so fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just so fun. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the reason why I'm here. I'm I'm back in it kind of because I'm going through this like you know midlife crisis, reliving my uh, my youth <laughs> and all this craziness, you know. But uh, but loving every minute of it. <laughs> loving every minute of it. Yeah. 
another song from that that time yeah yeah man. yeah 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 man yeah well i'm i'm a little little younger than you you know i yeah. i was a i was a teenager in the 90s mm-hmm. okay i just gave away my age to some of you guys you kind of know, like my cousin Joe. You're about that age. My cousin Joe and you are probably about the same age. And, hmm. and you know, he got into music hanging out at my studio after he blew out his knees playing baseball. And uh, that's what, wow. you know, like music is such a great therapy, not just a therapy, but it's such a great, like, outlet to be able to get into. Mm-hmm. Um, really helps, you know, in so many ways heal people, mind, body, and soul and all, you know. But... I tell you, there's nothing like, you know, if you could play a guitar and sing a song to a girl, I mean, <laughs> it still works. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. It still works. What still works? Singing a song to a girl that you wrote there <laughs> on a guitar. You could do it, do it on a piano, too, and that's impressive. But if you can do it on a guitar, I mean, it's, it still works. Uh-huh. That's cool. And, hey, the axe. EVH and all, thanks for joining. Awesome, the act. Thank right you so much. Yeah. Thank you, man. So, yeah, right now we're talking about the Sammy Hagar I Never Said Goodbye album, which turns 35, I believe, is, is what it what it said. Yesterday. yesterday. Yep. Yeah. Turned, sur- tur- turned 35 yesterday. Oh, those clippers. I want those now. <laughs> you want some of those? Yeah, man. I'd totally wear Get them. Now. Get yeah. them through, through Ben Hill and store, man. Put that link up. <laughs> Grab them. Grab them. 5150 slides. Oh, yeah, hey, Han Solo. What's happening, dude? Look at those. Hey, Han yeah. Solo. Totally the 90s those. equals 91, 92, and 93. Yeah, I know, man. It's weird. It's 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 really weird because when when I when I think of um you know, when somebody well let's let's just let's go back a decade real quickly. You know, we talk about 80s metal, you know, talking guitars, 80s metal live Tuesdays, um, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific, you know, John Mancuda, Dane Zimmerman. You know, we talk about 80s metal. Thing is, I mean, let, let me know in the chat what you guys think, because when I think when I think of 80s music, I think of early 80s. <laughs> I like I think of like new wave. I think of Duran Duran. I think of, you know. You know that that type of stuff. When I think '80s, when I think '90s, uh, I don't know. I mean, everything kind of so carries over. Maybe it does kind of, but I think the, the 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 defining line that I think John Mancuda will 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 bore home every day with his with his little blue rhino is the '90s when grunge hit. That is the the dividing line between what was '90s and '80s. 80s music kind of there was a lot of stuff that went into like glam metal and then you got industrial came out of it so you know it was diverging already you know the rock guitar thing because you can't do the same thing over and over and over and over again people get tired of it like the beatles changed look up look how much the beatles changed in three four years you know Mm -hmm. so there you gotta change and that's what was good about van halen you know evolving too and that's one of the things i loved about another 80s band that i love that's not talked about much in these shows but i love u2 i'm a huge u2 fan dude i love the edge and his playing i mean i think you know what he kind of uh absorbed and kind of took from andy summers to some degree and you know joe strummer of the clash um was awesome that guy was like the effects master if anybody was a master of like how you can get different sounds and do a different complete different sound and every song mm-hmm. was different you know there was well as was... he's still around and he's still I current know. so he still is yeah. he still is but you know what i mean i mean this we're talking about an 80s band that evolved quite a bit throughout their their um time when they played in the 80s i'm talking about and that's an 80s band you know that continued on to, to today like you said so but i think yeah. there's that defining line between what was like the 80s kind of men without hats kind of you can dance with you want to kind of music mm-hmm. to you know everything from lover boy to to depeche mode to whatever that was 80s you know you had you had judas priest you had randy Rhodes, you had you know you had van halen with roth you had van halen with with sammy and then you had roth on his own and then you had kiss doing a variety of different things with different people i mean there's so much stuff going on the 80s had such huge like huge variety of music but there was definitely a line drawn in the 90s when grunge hit and that kind of whole like 
oh, we're going back to the grungy 60s kind of wearing corduroy jackets time, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, and like what I was just saying, for me, I was a teenager in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So so for me, 90s, yeah, and there was a definite, I mean, not, I mean, we're kind of getting off on a, on the subject, but but um, 90s was definitely it was is where it was just the, the total change in 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 rock music. That's when it wasn't that's when cool rock... to be a rocker anymore. You couldn't be a long haired rocker in the 90s. It wasn't cool anymore. The coolness left in the very early 90s. You could because 90 could, 90s. 1990. That's when that was still carried over from the late 80s. The hair metal, mm -hmm. the glam, all the that glam it really got super big in 86. 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, it was still there. By 91, it was it was done because mm -hmm. bands like Nirvana came out, the the, the grunge, you know, scene. Stephen Franklin, Stephen hey Franklin, dude, thank man. you Roxy so much. Green. Man. Thank you, man. Roxy Green. Thank you. Thank you for all your support, Stephen Franklin. Channel member as well. Welcome, dude. Thank you, man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. But back to that album because we've gone off on a major tangent, right? But but I mean yeah. we we both grew up in that time, so you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, Sammy Hagar's "I Never Said Goodbye" turned thirty five yesterday. Incredible to think. Um, let's see. I know Laz just heard the album for the first time today. Yeah, all the way through, um, and I watched it twice, and it was great. But uh, let me see. There's actually a Sammy Hagar, I Never Said Goodbye, 35th anniversary interview with ah. Redbeard. This is pretty interesting. Well, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna listen have to, to listen that. to this. Okay. Very cool, very cool. Okay, all right. And some of the stuff he talks about is how being in Van Halen made Sammy a better musician, the speedy rehearsal to studio to mixing process of I Never Said Goodbye, Sammy on Give to Live, Sammy on Eagles Fly, Sammy on Joining Van Halen, Sammy on the Critics during the Van Halen 5150 tour. That That is critics awesome, of that tour? awesome stuff. <laughs> huh? I'm like, there were critics of that tour? <laughs> oh, man. I loved it. I loved I, I it. I mean, you criticized that tour. That was like probably the pinnacle <laughs> well okay okay let's let's talk let, let's talk that. let's let's talk about this this is actually this is actually pretty good and bozik thank you so much okay. right pretty good show tonight pretty good <laughs> it's only getting better from here bozik yeah it's only getting better from here <laughs> but hey <laughs> hey no no but hey okay let's talk about this laz this, this is Please. that's you you brought up a really good point okay when okay, so you were saying earlier, like you're you're just now rediscovering Van Halen, yeah, rediscovering yeah. all that stuff. When years, did yeah. you first hear about Van Halen? Well, what, give me in, a year. Don't give me an I'd age. Give me a year. Nineteen eighty. Okay, was the first time I bought like an album, and then I think it was eighty one. When when was it that Diver Down came out? Eighty two. Eighty two. I remember getting Pretty that Woman vinyl. dancing in the streets. Wherever the good times gone. Version of that album Happy that Trails, really cool. Little Guitars. Yeah. But so um, eighty two. You eighty two. You got into Van Halen. Eighty two is when I wore that album out from playing it so much. Okay. Yeah. That's so you're very, so you were very familiar with the David Lee Roth era of Van Halen eighty two. I'm sure by nineteen eighty four, Jump. You, I was playing I'm, it. I, I'm sure <laughs> it was. Keyboards. You were literally playing that. You actually played some at Guitar Center in Pasadena yeah. when we were on our, our little road trip earlier keyboard, this month. Yeah. <laughs> you were actually played some of that. It's actually on my video again, our Pasadena road trip yeah, right. Right. card right up here about where that QR code is. There'll be a card on playback. Yeah. So, okay. So, Laz, let, let, let me ask you this. Okay. So, you were very familiar with Roth era Van Halen. 84, biggest thing ever. Next thing you know, Roth leaves or quits or whatever the story is. Sammy Hagar joins the 5150 tour. How, how, um, and this will actually bring us back into talking about Sammy's record. 5150 tour, 1986. How, were you aware of what was going on back then? Well, what I knew about was the breakup, but, you know, I was into so many other bands at the time too that, that I wasn't like so just focused on any one band. Um, but it didn't bother me. I wasn't surprised that there was, you know, David Lee Roth going off on his own. It just seemed natural that he wanted to be his own thing and he wanted to like be an actor and break off. 
And well, he, he put out that, that solo record. He put yeah. out uh, California Girls. Yeah, you know, and it was all obvious. That, it was so. all over, all over you. I mean, YouTube, all over MTV, and and everybody, right. you know, everybody uh, just saw that it was a natural thing. And it, it just seemed to me like it was a gimmick the whole way through. That though he didn't know, you know, he got fired or or he quit or whatever. It just seemed like that was some kind of gimmick thing to me. I didn't really take any right. of it too seriously. I thought, oh, this is just Hollywood, you know, making waves so they can get some attention by making waves. And and I thought, you know, Sammy was a natural. Uh, I remember hearing back then that Ed, Edward Van Halen was talking about, oh, we wanted Sammy before we knew about Dave. But he already had the band and he was with Montrose and stuff and he was doing his own solo stuff. He was already doing his own thing. But they, mm-hmm. they had the, the idea of having Sammy in their band because they thought he had the right vocal range. And they, they really felt, I, this is what I remember them saying, that they wanted someone that had that higher vocal range. And it was such a relief to have him join the band because they were able to do things they couldn't do with Dave. That's all I remember, really. Okay, I just yeah. had to burp. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think I think what actually happened, and this is actually this is actually uh, really explained in in uh, Greg Renoff's book. Uh, let me see the one that I still need to buy. You should buy. You should definitely buy that one. Let me, uh, the one I'm reading. I have two over here. Let's see which one is the one you're talking about. Did I spell that right? Hopefully, Nightbot has that. Okay. Something fell. Oh, look out. Uh, okay, you've got the Noel Monk book, and then you've got the Van Halen saga. Oh, dude, that's that photo. Remember back of Guitar Center? Of that's the picture. Of course, Hollywood. That's that's the picture. So uh, so anyway, oh there we go, there we go. It goes to there's a the Templeman book website, Greg Renoff. Cool. But anyway, in in Greg Renoff's uh, Van Halen Rising, I I think I believe he t- actually talks about. When Van Halen got signed, they were in the studio, and I think Roth was having kind of a hard time uh, recording. And I, I think Templeman had worked, of course, with Sammy Hagar in, in Montrose, uh, you know, some five years earlier or whatever. And I think for like a split second, you know, they thought about, oh, you know, maybe we should get Sammy Hagar for this because the band, you know, the brand new band, freshly signed, you know, Pasadena, as you know, yeah. knew about them. We were, we were. Literally just at the Pasadena Civic, we were looking at that plaque from Pasadena for Van right. Halen, where it talked about how they had played that place like 14 times or whatever. Um, only Southern California really knew who Van Halen was. So if they were to switch singers before that first record, nobody, you know, the world wouldn't have known, you know, and it, it would have been, been yeah. it would it might have. <laughs> well, clearly, you know. I mean, my opinion was I think Dave had a certain swagger that that 70s into the 80s era thing was a good thing to have. The late 70s, to have that kind of rock and roll attitude, you know, that swagger, it carried into the 80s really well. And Sammy had it too, you know, but definitely Dave brought the girls, (laughs) you know, that's for sure. Not that Sammy mm-hmm. had any problem bringing the girls, but de- definitely Dave definitely brought the girls, and and the thing he is also when, brought the dudes too. He probably brought dude. The dudes. I run a vet. I run the second biggest <laughs> Van Halen group on Facebook. Yeah. These guys talk nonstop about how much they love Dave Lee Roth and that guy. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, he's got. A That's all they talk about. Like how much they love Roth. Yeah, he's he's really got a lot of charisma. You know, and uh, in so many ways uh, that that was really great for. Edward Van Halen and all. I think the Sammy era in some ways was way more pop. And I think that's the direction that that I think Eddie always kind of wanted to go to some degree, especially with the keyboards and stuff. And there was a lot of infighting with Dave because of that. Um, surprisingly, because he still had synths on some of his stuff <laughs> later, you know. But the bottom line is that I think... Uh, Which we'll talk I, about yeah, as well. I, yeah. But I think that Sammy... And Eddie made better writing partners. And I think that's what made those albums bigger in some ways to the population, to the population. Well, they had they had the number one hits with Sammy. Number one hits. They never had number one hits with Roth. Right. Ever. And 
They had they a lot of fun have. rock and roll tunes with Dave that are like, you know, like everybody wants them. One, everyone wants some, you know, that that's one of my favorite songs because it's just got such that funky kind of Calypso funky beat or whatever that boom, 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 boom kind of thing going on. Bozik. 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 People only like Roth because he was predisposed to the original stuff. If Hagar was first, Roth could never replace yeah, him. That, that's, that's, true. that's definitely that's definitely the truth. And yeah, I put a I put a a poll in the chat here on YouTube that says I probably could have worded this better, but it says, "Would you like to have have Would you like to have had Hagar in Van Halen before David Lee Roth?" Currently, we got twenty two votes, seventy three percent no, twenty seven percent yes. I'll just uh, end that right there. I probably could have worded that a little differently, but it yeah. definitely it would have been very interesting if if they would have replaced Roth with Hagar from the very beginning. And yeah, yeah, there's no way Roth could have could have replaced mm-hmm. Hagar afterwards. No, but I think that Roth has a certain darkness to him that that kind of. Uh, drew some of the darker sounding guitar playing out of eddie and i appreciated that because there's that darkness that's that's part of dave's personality you know and and i'm not saying it's good or bad or whatever i'm just saying it's there we all have dark that dark part of us in some way or another bottom line with dave it was definitely a big part of his personality and and he didn't have a problem you know like kind of putting it out there and I think that uh, that also drew like that Women and Children first album is one of my favorite albums for guitar because it's more metal sounding. It's more it's more heavy sounding. Um, it's more hmm. edgy. It's more in your face. You know that at the same time is a darker. You know, there's a lot of darkness in that album, too. But it brought a lot of darkness out of Eddie, but out of his playing, too. You don't feel that you don't see that with any of Hagar's. Hagar's is more rock and roll, fun beach party let's let's you know have some tequila and have a good time you know kind of music and i Mm -hmm. love that about hagar but but sometimes there's something about that's what i loved about ozzy and Rhodes and that combination they brought you know there was that that classical stuff but there was that darkness part of people's lives that they dealt with in in lyricism and and so yeah you know sometimes you gotta have the the light and the dark side you know battling it out (laughs) it makes it an interesting life i guess Mm mm-hmm yeah, yeah, and speaking of Women and Children First, uh, that's really, I mean, aside from all the reverb on there, that that's the only, well, that let me just say, that's a record that, to me, it isn't really, it doesn't sound dated as far as the production, you know? Aside right. from the reverb. Right. Aside from the reverb on that, there's nothing, there's nothing about Women and Children First, audio-wise, to me, that that, that sounds... That dates it, 1980. Yeah, you could you could literally, like I said, the, the maybe the reverb kind of does. So take some of that, take a lot of that reverb sure. reverb off. It's a very dry sound. Mm-hmm. Like I said, there's nothing on there that tells me ah, 1980. Right. Same with same with Nirvana. Same with there's right. actually there's there's a Nirvana record. Is it uh, in Utero? I think it's in, in utero. utero. Yeah, that was the one after that one. Yeah. That record, same album, thing. Too. Same thing. There's nothing to me that production wise that really dates that record either. Mm-hmm. I remember listening and to that record. I love ah, Nirvana, by the way. <laughs> years ago. Thought, oh, yeah. so do I. So do I. I remember listening to that album genius. like 20 years ago, driving around thinking, yeah. oh, this this sounds hip. I mean, it was, it, it was, but it was, it was at the same time when I heard Nevermind, I remember talking to my girlfriend. I'm like, sounds like this guy's screaming out to the world, you know, for help and something bad's going to happen. <laughs> and I, and I, just, just my well, why are you laughing? Okay. Well, hang on. Sad. I laugh at things that are. It's my way of dealing with it. <laughs> okay. I think we're. I think we're taking a phone call. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Yeah, it's Bozik, Donnie. How are you doing? Bozik, Yo, what up, man? Dude. Thank you for all your support, elaborate. man. No problem. I just wanted to elaborate on the Ross Hagar thing real quick about what we were talking about because yeah. it's hard to fully express what I was trying to say in the chat. Mm-hmm. Here, here's the thing. I mean, had I always think about the Ted Templeman thing. Like, let's say Ross was their original singer still when they were playing, you know, small club shows in Pasadena. Okay. But let's say Templeman actually replaces Roth with Hagar in 1978. So the, the, 
the actual rest of, of the rock music world never got to see that version of Van Halen. Then right. you fast forward to 1985, they have a falling out, and Hagar leaves in the same way Roth did. So Eddie and the guys are deciding, well, who do we get now? How about the guy we used to play with? Interesting. So to me, hmm. it, it's the scenario will reverse basically, and Roth is the guy that replaces Hagar instead in 1985. I, I've always tried to explain this to you know um, Roth era Van Halen fans. The only reason you like this guy better is because he's the original frontman. Because he was there first. Yeah. People have. Yeah. People have an underlying predisposition to prefer what is original. Yeah. So if a restaurant changes their menu, if you're somebody who's been eating there 10 years, <laughs> even if the new food is good, you like you like what you've been used to. If your right. favorite soft drink changes the formula, you like what you were used to. And it's the same thing with an actor taking a role in a TV show, a, a front man becoming the new guy in a, in a band. Mm -hmm. You're used to the original guy. It's not necessarily that one's better than the other, but you're just used to the original, and that's why you think it's better. Now, in the case of Roth and Hagar, here's the problem. Okay. Had, had Hagar been the first guy, the argument now that fans would have is, wait a minute, you replaced a guy who was a great singer with a guy who can't sing. I don't care if his, <laughs> if his theatrics on stage are great. He can't sing. So, so it, it, I think it would have been impossible to do it. I, I don't, I don't think it would have been successful. It would have worked the way it worked in reverse. And, and I know that that's going to piss Ross, Ross fans off. And I like both eras. I'm, I'm not necessarily a David Lee Roth hater. I, I've gotten every single album in the catalog, and I, and I like pretty much everything. I mean, it's really two different bands if you look at it. Um, if you yep. look at the, the two eras, you know, in detail, but. It's hard to replace a guy who can sing well with a guy who can't sing. I think it would have been a disaster if it was the other way around. And that's just my opinion on it. And I'll hang up and get your guys' thoughts. Take it easy. Well, Bye. Zeke, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Yep. Yep. I, I like what G. Bushnoff has to say, though. So do you see what G. Bushnoff says right below Han Solo up there? G. Bushnoff yeah. is saying... Where he says, Here's Dave the can't sing any Sammy songs, and Sammy can't sing Dave songs. Um, so that's the thing, man. There's some truth to that, don't you think? I mean, like what Bozik was talking about earlier, too, was that, or somebody was, is that Dave has a certain kind of soul, kind of bluesy singing style to him that's a little, almost cabaret-esque, if you know what I mean, you know? Mm -hmm. Sammy doesn't sing that way. Sammy's a straight up in your face rocker, you know? Wow, like that, you know. <laughs> Whereas Dave's like wow too, but he's like, hey, little buddy, blah, 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 you know, and he'll do that thing. And Sammy's not that kind right. of guy. He doesn't doesn't work for him that way. Whereas Dave kind of he's got that pizzazz, if that's the right word. It's a, that that kind of thing. And that's what I love about Dave. Dave, I love. I mean, I love Dave and his solo stuff too. Because that who's hey, I'm a gigolo guy. Oh, you that know? stuff drives me insane. I love like... it. It was great. It was Dave. <laughs> that was Dave, man. That was Dave. And if Dave was just getting to be his crazy, stupid ass self, but we mm -hmm. loved it. I, I loved it because it was like, yeah, he's just being his crazy clown self out there, and getting the babes. You know, right on, dude. You know, mm -hmm. it was well, fun. see, this this goes fun. this goes back to you getting into Van Halen in 1980 yeah. or 82. Yeah same time but let's go back even further okay uh, yeah did you know did you know about montrose back in 74 a 73 little bit, a little bit because i i was the oldest in my family so nobody exposed me to rock and roll like in my entire family i was the oldest so usually somebody has a bigger brother or cousins or something i didn't you know so i i had a lot of different music most of what i heard was off the radio and if i was lucky there was some friend of somebody that exposed me to something like santana or whatever that otherwise never would have heard you know um but the bottom line is uh i didn't really know too much about stuff like jeff beck and montrose and stuff back then because it wasn't played on the radio much so if right. it wasn't played on the radio i didn't know about it you know right and back in the yeah. late 70s you know i remember 
discovering KISS because it was a kid at our school at the Saratoga in Saratoga. We went to Harker Academy. It's now Harker School. And mm-hmm. uh, there was a kid that was trying to get everyone to join the KISS Army. So I didn't know what the hell is this KISS Army thing. And I didn't want to join because it looked weird. But then I saw, you know, the whole dragon <laughs> dude with the blood and the flames. And I'm like, oh, this is like Godzilla, but with guitars. Yeah. Let's, Gene let's Simmons? Check it out. Yeah. That, like, to me, I was Gene like a 12-year-old. How old was I? I was 11 years old. And I'm like, hey, this is Godzilla with, you know, flames and a guitar with the spiked heels. And then we had the Starman guy shooting fireworks out of his guitar. I mean, I, I was like, yeah, this mm-hmm. is so fun, you know. So as a kid that age, I was getting into that. But I also had, like, the Beach Boys album and the Beatles album, listening to the Close Encounters soundtrack and Star Wars <laughs> soundtrack. And that that was me. Rocky I was I, I to me, my rock star you know? back then was John Williams. I was all Star Wars, yeah, man. Superman, Close Bill Encounters, Conti. Bill Raiders. Conti. Damn, wow. You know? To me, John Williams was the man until I discovered rock and roll, which really weirdly yeah. was thanks to the Dukes of Hazard. I mean, that, that's that's how I discovered that stuff. Um but uh very 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 interesting yeah very interesting conversation here talking about if sammy had joined then that is a really kind of first um it almost happened right i mean they they were talking about it well yeah yeah, they for a split second it it, it Mm could have but it didn't and and it wouldn't have been the van halen you know none of it would have turned out the way you know, because when you throw a different person in, into the scene, yeah. it's a totally different, totally different, different scene. I mean, like when when I do these shows, everybody, you know, guests that I have on, totally different, different vibe than you know. So right. so if Sammy had been there from the beginning, you know, who knows? Maybe they would have been heavier because Sammy with Montrose was pretty heavy. Yeah, you know, you can't think, although. I mean, Sammy did have some solo stuff out by that point. I mean, but still, it was still, I think the Sammy stuff got a little softer. Sorry, Sammy. Um, as his solo, you know, uh, albums kept going on through mm-hmm. like the early, early 80s. I well, think 1977. did he do that song though? I mean, he did that, that, that was that, that was the, like, the flag bearing, like, heavy metal song was the Sammy Hagar. Heavy metal heavy was Sammy metal. Hagar. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It was like, Literally, it was, heavy, it was yeah, for the movie. So it, was exactly. for the, it was for so the movie, Heavy Metal. Me, Sammy was like the rocker dude, the red rocker. The red rocker. That's yeah. that's what he was known like, as. Yeah, 55. And he was like, I was at that age. I was like, yeah, neither can I. <laughs> you know I am. Yeah. <laughs> I love Sammy's stuff. I mean, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so who knows? I mean, knows? I mean, he, you know, he was heavy. I mean, Montrose was, was for the time was pretty heavy. So, so you know, who knows? Very interesting discussion. Leave some drop some comments down below on playback what you guys what you guys hmm. think about. Wow. Dan about, Dan of New Jersey has an interesting comment there. Let's see. This one? Yeah. If Roth had stayed, hmm. we would have had more and better guitar better from Better guitar from Eddie. Hmm. Eddie. Interesting. It's it's I possible. I mean, the thing is, you you never. I mean, uh, no nobody truly knows what was going on behind the scenes, other than the band, other than the people that were there. So you really, you know, it's it's hard to say. It's it's hard to say what you know, what could well, have some happened. Of his best stuff came during that that Sammy era. I mean, some of his most unique kind of guitar work was in that Sammy era, wasn't it? Cathedral, right? No, that was oh. that was Roth. Oh, that was Roth. Okay. That was on the record that you oh, couldn't stop listening right. to, Diver Down. Yeah, that's right. Oh my god, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> Thank you for All playing, right. Laz. You've been a great guest. It's okay, man. It's okay. You're learning. That's why you're here. That's why you guys are here. I mean, if you like Van Halen, this is the place you want to be because we'll, you know, then I'm we'll thinking teach of something you. Else. We'll Which teach you all of? about Van Halen here. I'm thinking huh? of something else. I'm thinking of something else then. I don't anyway. know. I don't know. But very interesting. Very, very interesting stuff. Um, but uh, let's. I don't even know if we can even go back to that. I never said goodbye. Uh, man, let's see. Really quickly, really quickly. Let's let's go back. Let's go back. 
Um, let's see a couple things about about this album that I will just mention really quickly. Again, happy 35th birthday to this record. If you guys haven't heard it, definitely check it out. It is solo Sammy Hagar. Um, I think it's some of his best solo material. And again, Edward Van Halen on bass. I mean, come on. Co-produced by Eddie. Um, And I'll go ahead and tell you guys. Yeah, the guitar on the record that Eddie actually played was during the guitar solo for Eagles Fly. You hear some tapped harmonics. That's Eddie. Hmm. I think it's like three notes, three or four that taps. That's all he did there? That's Eddie. That's all he did. That's all he did. That was mm-hmm. him. That was him. And actually, there's actually a photo of Eddie from the studio. Oh, if I can find this. If I, if I, if I can find this and show this to you guys, that would be amazing. Oh, man. when When was that? Let's see. Let's see. Well, well, I'm looking for that. Oh, pff, I found it. Amazing. Dude. <laughs> You're so good, Johnny. <laughs> Thank you, man. Here's Eddie actually in the studio playing Sammy's oh, Kramer yeah. Beretta guitar yeah. during the sessions for this record. So that's possibly him right there playing that guitar solo. Yeah, you know, yeah. those harmonics. Possibly. Pants. Possibly. There you go. Edward Van Halen, yeah. 1987. And then I just happen to have a, a photo of Sammy right here with the same guitar. There you go. Cool. There you go. Same era. Same, same time. Uh, yeah, I just think about what, what <laughs> it would have been so cool to be in a band like that in that, that time period. And oh, of course. And I, hey, I, I uh, almost regret that I didn't, I didn't try to, work on that harder back then because I, I i was turned off by the whole industry stuff so i didn't really want to get into the music industry back then but mm-hmm. i kind of feel like you know what i should have just said screw all that and just just gone for it and just like if i if i could change my life and go back that's what i would do that's the one change i would make i'd be you know what i'm gonna pick up the guitar i'm gonna practice more on that or bass um i could play bass pretty good um, but keyboards, you know, I could definitely, definitely do it. Keyboards. Keyboards, synths, keyboards, you know, organ, whatever. You put me in front of anything that's got keys <laughs> and let me go. Release the Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I just go crazy on keyboards. But the bottom Let's line see. is that if I could go back, I would, I would, I would try to create a band like that or join a band like that and just have fun and not care what anyone says. Just do it for the fun of it and whatever yeah. happens. Ah, you got to That's what I want to do now, now, Johnny. I want to do it now. Oh, well, you're here. You're here, man. You're here, and, and we're, have, we're having fun. Yeah, that's awesome. We're having a great time. Stephen Franklin, where was that record recorded? Uh, Sammy Hagar's I Never Said Goodbye record. Again, it was untitled at first, but, and then it was named that later. It was recorded at a couple different places. It was recorded at A&M Studios, uh, one-on-one recording studios, both in L.A. and the record plant in Sausalito. Which Laz, you know Sausalito. It's just north of yeah, us. Yeah, it's awesome, awesome town. So I very mean, arts, cool, artsy town. It's where all the writers and creatives and like there's painters, and poets, like, poets, all the old hippies, you know, all the people that make like statues out of glass, glass statues or or you know bronze statues or they you can you just walk through that town and like you better bring. There's some a lot money. of there's a lot of artists, you a lot of artists up money, up, yeah, up in that area, including amazing. Sammy. Sammy's yeah, actually actually yeah. up there. Salsalito, uh, he actually had a um, he was he had a there. I, I think it was a, some relation to him had a a a, a, a bicycle shop in Salsalito. Huh. I don't know if you know when you go. Let's say you're going across. Let's say you're going mm-hmm. from San Francisco through what's now known as the Robin Williams Tunnel. Right. Right. With the rainbow. Right. Rainbow you tunnel. go through there. You go right into Salsalito. This town. Right. Which is where the studio is, where part of this record was recorded. Corte Madera, right? Yeah. Right before Corte Madera, I think. Right before. Um, Salsalito. There was a place called Salsalito Cyclery, which oh. was, uh, it, it's probably still there, actually. But Sammy Hagar actually had a uh, a bike 
brand. I think it was called the Red Rocker. It was a, a bicycle. Cool. Maybe our, our friend yeah, Steve maybe Anderson maybe one has one. one. I don't know. <laughs> but it was actually those. there at that store in Sausalito where they where they sold those. Mm-hmm. And he had he had clothes. If you remember the Foreign Lawful Car Knowledge tour where Sammy had all these clothes that said red on the back or red rocker, those clothes were available at this store in Sausalito. This is all true. See, you guys? You want to learn about Van Halen? Yeah, this is the place you want to go. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Yeah, Sammy yeah? was, a, was a, a, you know, he's still, like you were talking about this on Tuesday's show with John and with Dane. Um, Sammy is still like the guy. I wish I was in shape like that guy. You know, that guy's in shape. He takes care of himself. He's like, what, 70? You guys singing like a 20 year old and doing who knows what else he's like over a he's over seven yeah i mean the guy is the guy is incredible he he has he has another yeah. birthday coming up yeah in I the mean, chat how old is sammy hagar in the chat boxed like his father oh my grandfather was a boxer how old my is sammy hagar in the chat let us know i can i've got it right here but let us know let us so know. 74 says Jesus. Rafael. Thank you. He Yeah, he's 74. He was born, it says in Salinas, which is just south of, which is half an hour from me. So Salinas. Oh, Salinas is great. Yeah. yeah. I know that whole my... area because we'd go there, you know, like my grandfather, we, he, he would make Hungarian sausage and we'd go and buy like the pigs from there, from the farmers. Oh, well, okay. Um, <laughs> okay. My dog, Howie, we would actually take to Salinas. <laughs> We would take him there because when Howie was getting older, he passed away uh, a couple of years ago now. But when he was getting older to help him out with his with his his health and his his um, strength, we would take him to this place where dogs could swim indoors. And I would swim with him. I would actually get in and, and nobody knows this stuff. I've never talked about this, but I would take Howie. And this is when he was almost before he passed away. I would take him and we would swim in these swimming pools together in Salinas. So there you go. The cool. town where Sammy Hagar was born, apparently. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a great area. <laughs> that whole area is great. We grew up, uh, you know, camping out and going up to Mount Tam all the time and Mount Tamalpais. And one of my favorite beaches is Stinson Beach, actually. It's a yeah. great beach that's on the coast right over the mountain there. Um, yep. That whole I know, area. I know, I know Stinson Beach. Yep. Yeah. And we used to go to my grandparents had a piece of land um, before they passed away. Um, they had this piece of land near Gurnerville, near the, the Russian river. And hmm. we used to go there all the time. So we'd drive through, or the, you know, we'd drive through all the time that, and, and stop off at places along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you know, Sausalito, Salinas, whatever, you know, wherever you pull right. off to have something to eat or whatever. But yeah, I mean, that area is just great. And I went to that summer camp up in Santa Rosa. You have to go through that area. Uh, Cloverleaf Ranch, two years, two summers in a row. Mm-hmm. Great, great times there. Learn how to ride, shoot, bone arrow, everything. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. So that area. I mean, if if you know the Bay Area, and you you know that area because you can't avoid. You got to go there. I mean, it's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. Bay. Yeah, yeah. If, if anybody, if you if you ever come out here to California, if you go to San Francisco, especially if you're if you're fans of you know the music scene. Yeah, there's so many different places you can you can hit up. I mean, not just in the city. By the way, hmm. you guys know I've been doing a lot more. Does that make sense? I've been doing more like vlog style videos. Like I go live, you know, different places. And I, I kind of talked to Laz about this. I've been in a um, couple of yeah. I actually want to, I actually want to, well, we just did a trip of Hollywood. I mean, we just oh, went yeah, to the NAMM was... show. We went to, pa- we did the Van Halen tour in well, Pasadena then... to Hollywood yeah. to, you know all that stuff the Metallica you know. mansion and stuff I was um, about, yeah. we were at the Metallica mansion in El Cerrito um and last maybe we can figure out a good time a good day to do this um but yeah. I, I want I want to I want to go live I want to take our viewers here into San Francisco well, that'd be great take them to hate street yeah. take them to the corner of hate and Ashbury where the Grateful Dead house is you know where Tom and Jerry's you know is yeah, or, you know um Take, I want to walk you guys through Hate Street. I want to t- I want to show you like all these different uh, places out here. Right there, that... where the Summer of Love happened too, in that park, mm-hmm. right there. So that's right there. Yeah. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff. But 
But uh, Laz and I will will yeah best driver. We gotta we gotta yeah. do we gotta do a bunch of this stuff. Thanks, Symmetry. Yeah, <laughs> best <laughs> last best driver. Yeah, I'll get you there in one piece and quicker than anyone else. I'm like the Dude, transporter, but I'd never I'd never I'm gone from book. from Hollywood to Santa Cruz that quick. How long did it take us to get back? It was Four quick. Four and man. a half hours. <laughs> yeah. Four and a half hours. Unbelievable. That's yeah, an eight hour drive. He cut it in half. <laughs> yeah. It was unbelievable. <laughs> but it wasn't dangerous. I mean, you wouldn't have really. I mean, you can, you know, anyway. Yeah. But yeah, yeah was, Facebook user. I was going three digits on the mile per hour gauge there. <laughs> oh, my <for> gosh. <laughs> Live yeah. show tours. Look, yeah, look for look for a lot of that. And hello, RVK5150. Welcome. Welcome yeah. to the show. <laughs> exactly. I'll be doing so, that tonight, by the way, Zach Fong. I'm going to jump in tonight. It's You're going to jump in with us tonight? It's Friday night, man. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping in. It's Friday night, so you know what that means. We'll, we'll be live on Twitch playing some Grand Theft Auto. Mm. We'll have a great time. I mean, it's just, it's just insanity over there. Laz is going to join us. I'm going to have to buy The 5150 some. crew. We're actually called the 5150s within uh, GTA. We, yeah. uh, that's our official uh, club name. We took it over. It was already there, and I think Robot took it over. And so we are the, we are the fifty one fifty crew within Grand Theft Auto. Uh, Laz says he's going to join us, but hey, we do that over on Twitch. So make sure you subscribe. You can subscribe for free. See here we go ben, again talking about subscribing. You can subscribe for free using Amazon Prime over on Twitch and join us. It says there weeknights one a.m. We'll start a little earlier tonight. I think I'll be in there probably nah probably in a couple hours. After after dinner, right I'll spend some uh, some quantity time, time over quality. over over on Twitch doing some GTA. So you guys join us. You guys have no idea what you are missing if you're not watching those those lives. Yeah, it's so fun. It, it, you that's know, I where wish we actually talk shit. Me. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, um, <laughs> join and you can join us in the Discord. Uh -huh. You can so actually fun. join us in the Discord server while we're live on Twitch playing GTA, and you can actually talk to us. That's how we actually talk to each other. We actually do voice chats. And there, there's a number of people. There's a number of people that join us over there. So so there's there's a number, number of people. So join the Discord and chat with the community. Post, ne post memes and favorite moments in the Johnny Bean Discord. We have a great time. 5150 crew. Mount up, majestic PB and yeah, PB majestic. and J Cat. You know yeah, that. You know. You know it. We have a great time. So join us. Join us over in the Discord, Twitch, GTA. Every night, basically. But tonight, I think probably in uh, PC. <clears throat> like a couple hours. We we couple played hours. through the PC RVK. PC. Yeah. PC. Yes. Yes. PC. That's right. PC online. PC. <laughs> PC online. Okay. All right. How are we doing on time? Okay. All right, Laz. Next story. Next story. Next story. Ooh. David Lee Roth keyboardist Brett Tuggle dies at 70. Now, I know uh, you, 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 you had said earlier. I play. Yeah. Oh, he, he was definitely, he was much more than than uh, than uh with david lee roth he was actually, oh, yeah. he was actually he was actually he was actually with a lot of people he was with fleetwood mac um and apparently a lot of my facebook friends were actually personal friends with him because i saw a lot of tributes to him uh the other day when it was announced that he had passed away mm. so so uh but hey but last you know from you mean where he, where he was actually where like, he originally came from? Like where did he, where like what? Let me see. Where did he grow up? Is he from like L.A. area or Bay Area or where? where I can I can right? actually I can actually find Curious. out right now. Thank you to Google. I can actually tell you he's actually he was born in Denver, Colorado. Oh wow! Okay. Actually, a good. place where you uh, I think you're from. Uh, well, actually, I lived or where you lived? My high school years. My high school Thank years. Thank you, Facebook moved user. From here to there, and I lived in Colorado in Inglewood. First in Cherry Hills, and then in, uh, I guess it was Englewood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We went to Cherry Creek High School, class of 84. You cool. don't see me in the yearbooks because I didn't go to those picture shoots. 
I think I <laughs> you skip watch. school the day of dude that's the only day i would sh- when dude. i was in school the only day i would show up was for the picture just so it we looked were, like i was there we didn't we were i was hanging out with our friends we were like none of us wanted to go to the pictures <laughs> we were like screw that we didn't go wow okay all right one well, anyway went to pictures anyway anyway uh david roth keyboardist uh, a lot of you Van Halen fans, Roth fans, will know of Brett Tuggle from the Skyscraper album. Um, I, th- I think he played on, on, the, on the tour as well. Um, he was also known for playing keyboards in Fleetwood Mac, I think, you know, more currently. Um, and apparently he, he passed away from cancer. Mm. Let's see. It says, uh, Dave, longtime Dave Lee Roth keyboardist Brett Tuggle died June 19th. From complications mm. related to cancer, he was 70. Uh, Tuggle's son, Matt, confirmed the news to Rolling Stone. Uh, and let's see. Tuggle was a member of Roth's band from 1986 to 1994. Before returning in 1997, he co-wrote Roth's 1988 top 10 single, Just Like Paradise, which was a pretty big tune. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was going back to the, the solo Roth stuff. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I was, a, I was, I was definitely a fan. I was definitely really quickly. I was actually a bigger fan of skyscraper than I was eat em and smile, hmm. which might sound kind of crazy to a lot of people. Cause to, to a lot of, a lot of, you know, the Roth fans, eat em and smile was like the perfect record for, for hmm. David Lee Roth. You know, Steve Vai, Billy Sheehan. Yeah, there's some great songs in there. Greg Bissonette, <laughs> yeah. Brett Tuggle, you know. Um, but uh, apparently he, he, he uh, co-wrote uh, Just Like Paradise, great song. After Roth's 1986 Eat em and Smile tour ended, Tuggle sat down at his home keyboard and came up with the music that Roth eventually fleshed out into his 1988 hit, Just Like Paradise, it peaked at number six on the Hot 100, and if you guys remember the music, if you guys remember the music video, great video of him doing the the mountain climbing, all this all this stuff that he uh, that Roth was was known for during those years. Uh, along with Roth, Tuggle worked with a long list of big name artists over the years, including Fleetwood Mac, Jimmy Page, Rick Springfield, David Coverdale, John Kay, and Steppenwolf. Hmm. Sticks is Tommy Sticks. Shaw. And Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels. Hmm. So yeah, I didn't. I didn't even know. I didn't even know that that he, he had done all this other work. Um, hmm. I'm a big Tommy Shaw fan, by the way. Love his stuff in the sticks. Mm-hmm. He made that band rock. Did you see Van Halen in 1995 in Oakland? No, see, I never saw Van Halen, dude. Remember my story. <laughs> All right. Well, hang on, hang on. Okay, rest in peace, Brett Tuggle. That's uh, never saw him. That's the sad part about my life. <laughs> okay. But there's a lot of bands I didn't see that I wish I'd seen. Yeah, I know. Okay. All right. So in in uh, okay, here we go, you guys. This show is all over the place. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay, you guys. Balance Van Halen Balance Tour 1995. I've told the story a million times, but you know it's a Van Halen show. I'll tell it again. What happened was was uh, their original date at the Oakland Coliseum was canceled, supposedly due to illness. But what actually happened was Eddie Van Halen was detained at the Burbank airport for carrying a loaded gun on his carry-on. He, apparently, he had forgot about it. So he was detained at, at the airport. So the show was, was postponed. Okay. Right. <laughs> Right. So anyway, so I go to the show and it says there, you know, show canceled. So and it turned home, you know, I went home, cried, you know. So uh, anyway, when the sh- when that show was rescheduled. They had Tommy Shaw and Jack Blades from Night Ranger. They were they were known as as Shaw Blades. Shaw Blades. I remember that. Yeah. They had the drummer from Damn Yankees. I can't think of his name. Michael something. Mm. I'm not sure who the, the guitar player was not Nugent. I'm not sure who the guitar player was. Tommy Shaw played the he, guitar. So Well, no, like lead. It wasn't Yeah. I remember I remember when 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 uh, I remember at this show. I remember at this show. Mm. 
Shaw Blades opened up. Tommy Shaw, acoustic guitar. Jack wow. Blades, probably bass. Another guy on guitar. Hmm. And then the, the drummer from Damn Yankees as well. They played Damn Yankees. They played Sticks. They played Night Ranger. I mean, Tommy Shaw and Jack Blades, that's, that's really, that's, that's one of the perfect combinations of, of writers and performers. Those two guys together. I'm, I hate to say it. I'm a bigger fan of them together than, hmm. than apart. Hmm. You know? I mean, I like Night Ranger. I like Styx. I love Damn Yankees. I think I love Damn Yankees more than it, any of those other bands. Yeah. Did I you ever, did you ever see them? Yankees. No, you didn't. I saw Damn Yankees live as well. No, I dude, was, I, I was living all those dreams for you back in the day. <laughs> in the, dude, in the 90s, I didn't go to as many shows in the 90s because that's when I had my studio. And I was like a studio rat, dude. Uh -huh. Honestly, I didn't go to a lot of shows. I mean, went to a few like local smaller gig shows like in town and stuff. We saw like Chris Isaac and stuff like that. We saw, you know, at the Elbow Room. And we'd, we'd see like, right. like freebie shows. I didn't have a lot of money to burn then because I put so much money in that studio too, but... The bottom line is that in the mid '90s to the later '90s, I didn't, I didn't see a lot of live stuff. False flag, no, love you too, man. You're, Plan you're did you guys, did you know this? False flag is planning to come out to California and hang out with Laz and I. Dude, when? Better not be August, dude, because I'm going to be in Europe in August. <laughs> and we'll finally get Please, to prove that know. False Flag and I are not the same person. Because you'd have to, you'd have to be insane to think we're the same person. We got a rock out in here. I got drums in here now. I got an electric drum set here. We got a rock out in here. Let's well, that's it. a Let's real small go. room, so I don't know. I know it's small, but you know, who cares? The studio room I had was smaller than this, and we rocked out in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was ten by twenty, maybe a little bigger. Ten by no, twenty like, inches. It was a ten by twenty <laughs> shack. <laughs> anyway false flag thank you for all your support man channel member as well and another channel member bozik hi johnny bain or false flag journey's hi yeah i'm hiring an actor to come out and hang out with us that we're claiming is false flag brian's so, you'll gonna pretend to be false flag <laughs> yeah brian's thank you again to brian spaulding man yeah Br brian so spaulding cool. actually gifted me this marshall cabinet right here Dang. Which there's a reason that's out here. The jar. There's shall. a reason. There's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason that's there. <laughs> this Sunday. Yeah, man. This Sunday. Or possibly maybe tomorrow. I'll be I'll be cranking huh. through that. Um, um. So so make sure you tune in. Uh, uh, who knows which show it'll be we have Saturday night live saturday nights with with your host john bl he's not going anywhere and we have uh sunday nights we have the sunday night string chain show where we play guitars we have a great time with our guitars so tune in saturday and or not or and tune in saturday and sunday nights here on johnny bean tv and so next year buy some merch year. okay that's cool next year right on huh he's saying he's gonna come next year so that's gonna be awesome dude yeah awesome dude i can't wait to meet full flug finally in the flesh you'd have to be fitted for a street jacket to think they're the same person johnny and false like no. i know <laughs> Some of those people are crazy. <laughs> you, you you'd have to be total in totally insane to think we're the same person because we're obviously not. Especially to insist consistently that. <laughs> That's totally totally uh, uh, <laughs> weird. Yeah. Anyway. But uh, let's see. Uh, how are we doing on time? We're still still going still going do you have anything anything you want to me want to promote yeah. well when's, sunday morning i got when's your show that thing where is it that thing right there i'm gonna install on sunday on the guitar mod squad show putting it into that thing and it's gonna make the meteora an even more stellar guitar than it is already yeah man It'll be easy to install, as Johnny knows. Johnny knows how easy it is to install. 
<laughs> you know how easy it is to install that now, right? Dude. It's freaking easy. And it's I, great. It it's it's dude, I I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait um to talk about it. Maybe we'll talk about it maybe some maybe tomorrow. Dude, you should you should post your video before I do my show because that way we can talk about that on my Sunday show morning. The install. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. That's up to you. you Sunday your... morning, nine a.m. Yeah. What what song is that from, Laz? You just heard it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus repes me. How do you like that fifty? That PV head. Wasn't a fan of the PV sixty five or five combo. Ugh. Hmm. Oh, well, look at this. We both have 50 on 50s behind us. I just noticed. Yeah. Look at this. Look. <laughs> look, we both have. Wait, I got to point to both things. Yeah, I, I, just need a, I just need a Jarshall cab like that for my. You want the Jarshall? What, do, what are you using? I, I'm using the orange. Ugh, let me go this way. Here. Two by look 12. Look at that, you guys. V30. Look at this. Right there. I don't know if you guys recognize that thing right here. That's a completely different kind of sounding animal. But if you like kind of music like Johnny and I like, like the police and stuff like that, you might like that. I'm trying to. Ah, it's even worse. <laughs> I, I can't you even. It all up. I'm going to have to move this whole table. Hang on. Oh, no, don't knock anything. Don't squish Ned. Where's Ned? Uh, he's he's fine. He's 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 over that way. Yeah, dude, this this is the sickest head. This thing is awesome. You know what I'm thinking? The next time I roll through there, we're gonna have to go live from your studio there, and yeah, and I'm gonna have to play through that. Come on over, man. I got I, think. I got that guitar. You can play through it. I got that guitar. You can play through it. I got the Satriani guitar. You can play through it. I got that. <laughs> I got okay, that one. Keep showing, keep showing those. Actually, I wasn't gonna, I was gonna wait, but I'll, I'll, those of you that are here right now, you'll get a preview. You'll get. I'm not gonna actually play, but let me, let me show you. Let me show you guys something, okay? Oh, but, well, let's answer this question first. Yeah, answer the. How question. do you like that PV head? Wasn't a, a fan of the PV 6505 combo. Hey, Zeus, which 6505 combo did you own? Two twelve. One twelve. The, the PV6505-112 was horrible. There was no bottom end to that thing at all. I, I played through several of them. It was one of the worst sounding amps I'd ever played. Was it the speaker enclosure and the speaker itself, or was it just the way that the amp It's was? open back. Okay, well, that... It's a 112 open back. The, the amp was like this thin, or the, the, oh, the combo. Well, that, I mean, the thing, there was no b bottom end. You gotta the 112? Oh, dude, that thing was awful. Yeah, that's why. That thing was awful, man. Put that in a better. Hate to say it. Box. Hate to say it, but but it was. Run that run that amp through a boogie one by twelve, and that'll sound killer. <laughs> but dude, the PV fifty one fifty, this thing, and if you guys want to know, this is what they call the original. I'll just here, watch this. I'll, I'll bring it over, man. Can you do it? Is it is it hooked up? Make sure it's not hooked up. No, Tom. it's not. It's not. Hooked up. All right. I love that that Jarshall has a big hole in the front. That's so punk rock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you again. Brian uh, Spalding. Brian Spalding. Sorry. <laughs> this is, you can hear me, right? Yeah. This is, this is the real deal right here. This is the real deal. And combining this with this... That's pretty much the this eighties Marshall cabinet. Yeah. That's a try that's again, well, thank you to Brian Brian Spaulding. This combination is incredible. This thing is amazing. Yep. Yeah, you can kinda add a add a guitar to that, add one of them Van Halen striped guitars to that, and that thing's that's a trifecta of rock and roll rock and dama. There you go. Perfect. Right there. There. There it is. So that Wait, thing actually has whoa. EVH right on it. I saw next to the on-off buttons. Yeah, well, that's what they call the block letter. Yeah. That ah, EVH right there. Okay. That's what people want. Ah. That's what they want. That's what they want. But anyway, this cabinet, Brian will tell the story at some point, um, but the speakers in this cabinet were actually meant for Eddie Van Halen. This is true. This is the truth. 
Brian will tell the story here at some point, but but the speakers that are actually in this were actually meant to go to Eddie, but Brian got them somehow. So anyway, this yeah. is a pretty pretty sweet sound in cab. Yeah. So I, Brian I mean, is... actually has Eddie Van Halen's speaker cabinets. Basically, that was supposed to go to Eddie Van Halen. Well, he did. Brian got him. He did. Oh, he he did, did, but now, but he gave he gifted it to me. So now I have no, no, no. I mean that Brian. You were saying that Brian got speakers that were supposed to go to Eddie. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So he got Van Halen cabinets, basically speakers. Yeah. The speaker. Well, I mean, yeah. Sure. Yeah. And and suppose well, not supposedly. Again, Brian will tell some of these stories. Um, George Lynch played through this cabinet. Uh, who's the hey. bass player in ACDC? Cliff, oh, I don't somebody, know. he played through this cabinet. There was a number of people that he he mentioned that had actually played through this cabinet down in, yeah. in the Hollywood scene back in the yeah, 80s. Man. This cabinet's been through a lot. It's got provenance. Definitely, <laughs> definitely <laughs> does. <laughs> definitely does. And it's it's amazing sounding. I'm not, <laughs> Han Solo, I'm not sure what they are. Brian will tell us at some point. Mm. What it is, and Cliff Williams. Thank you, Steve Carmichael. At them. Steve Carmichael, channel member. Carmichael. Thank you, man. Thank you, Cliff Williams. That's the guy. Cliff Williams. Cliff Williams. Well, they've got to be rated, you know, 120 watt, right, or more. They're probably, they're probably the speakers know. themselves have to be at least 40 watts each. I bet you. I have no idea. But we will figure all that out at some point. Anyway, I dragged that out. It's all right here. Maybe, depending on if my neighbors are around. Um, if I get some time tomorrow, I'll play through this. I'll, I'll, I'll crank. Last time I, I, cranked, I cranked it up to one, and it was loud enough. I'll, I'll turn it up maybe at some point tomorrow. At some point tomorrow. But something else I want, I want to show you guys really quickly and yeah, this is a preview of, of Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. A preview. <laughs> a preview of Sunday. Here we go. Oh. I just gave you the uh, drum roll. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Where are we? All right. A preview of Sunday. Is the Vega Trem. Yeah, man. The it's Vega Trem has oh. arrived. I do have it. The thing is amazing. You guys will not believe the Vega Trem. This guitar is now known as the Vega Trem. I put the sticker on the guitar. Yeah, you did, huh? I noticed that. <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, this was basically just a piece of crap guitar. Not anymore. <laughs> Before the Vega Tram. Now the thing is a freaking machine. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> so, Great. so 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 this this Sunday and maybe even tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. I'll be jamming out through this setup <laughs> with this guitar. Okay? This bridge, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. It really is. I mean, there's so much you can do with it. You know, it does the warble. You can go up, you can go down, you can go up a whole whole note. It's incredible. It's great. But first, this phone call. <laughs> Let me guess. False flag. I'm not sure. Hello, you're on the air. Neil Sean. Neil yeah. Sean is here. Hey, hi. You, Speaking of Bay Area, Marin County yeah. residents, Rock, I think Rock. he lives in Marin. Yes. Yes, he does, yes. apparently, best according guitar, to himself. Best, yes, best guitar player, in, <laughs> being modest, but best guitar player in the world. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it, in all honesty, what would you rather have, that Vega trim you just showed or a, Floyd, a, a high-end Floyd Rose? Honest, honestly, Johnny. Uh, on what guitar? Does it, does the guitar matter? Any anything. I'm I'm, I'm curious because it looks cool. You want to know the truth? Yeah. I'd rather have a Vega trim. There you go. 
because there you go. The it's, surprising. it's so easy to, to install it's so easy to, to use keep it in tune everything it's like wow. a, it, it really stays in tune it, it's yeah. almost like having a floyd okay. without the floyd yeah it's like does what a floyd does i mean do it's have, they're incredible do you need to have locking do you need to have locking tuners or is that just a whatever that's 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 icing on the cake yeah you don't have to. I don't. How wild you get? If you go look at wild, this. Tell them if you go wild on look at look at the tuners that I have on on this guitar here. This is like this is if you vintage. can see this. This is like the old timey. Yeah. Yeah, these are vintage gotcha. style tuners I'm using here. Look, they're even like bent. Just tuners back. Back <laughs> before anyone ever paid attention to what the tuners were. Look look at what I'm using. Yeah. That's the guitar. I'm Johnny using those. Paint job on himself. I'm. I'm using those. Yeah, I got to change because the, the, the paint job in the headstock doesn't match the guitar at all. It's cool. I think that's cool. I ripped this neck from another guitar. But yeah, it's it's amazing, man. And I, I'll I'll definitely, I'll, I'll be doing videos and talking more about the Vega Trim and how awesome they are. What, what, what's price ballpark? Uh, 50. Well, I got my, I got mine for free. So let's ask this guy who actually free paid for is one. 250 roughly plus 250, $250. Go to futone.com because they sell them. You can, you can go to, you can go to futone. Adam has them. Adam has them. Yeah. And yeah. you can get a 15% discount. But it, look, it looks cool because it's, I mean, I dig, I've always had Floyd Roses on 90% of my guitars, but, but sometimes, I mean, you have to get the lock and nut and, it, you know, if it, if it doesn't come with yeah. one, then to put one on is just not practical. That just looks like a regular Strat bridge, but it's not. It drops uh, it's, right it's in. It's totally. It's so easy. You'll see Sunday morning. It's totally not. In, you watch Johnny. That's video. not a regular, that's not a regular Strat bridge at all, man. No. But what I mean, I've it, got one right visually, here it, 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 look, it fits in, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have do you have the cover on it, Johnny, on the back, or do you have it? It does. Is, okay. it, is it covered or uncovered on the back? Yeah. It's uncovered. I'll get off the yeah, show on the back of it, man. I'll show on the back of it. That's cool. Two springs. That's all you need. And do you yeah. went with the the lower tension oh. or higher tension? Oh, white finger. I went with medium tension. You went with medium. All right, Neil. Two two springs. Two springs. Yeah. That's all you need. Yeah. Thank you, That's Neil. Sean, thank you. Yeah, dude. I have to. I have I have to go loosen up. I got a show in two nights. Oh, you all right. Good. Go play. Have a great show. <laughs> bye. All right. Bye bye. Oh, Neil boy. Sean, who actually does follow me on Twitter. He's awesome. Bozik. Bozik, dude. I was what, dude? I actually, I actually went back to Tuesday's show, and I was trying to scroll on through to find out who actually Ooh. mentioned that. I was gonna, I was gonna bring that up. Um, but I had talked about how I was gonna, when I was gonna install this, I was gonna put it on what's known as the David Ennis Strat, which is a, a Fender Elite Strat USA, gifted by the great David Ennis, another longtime viewer. I was gonna install that on that. Um, and then when I went to, to shoot the video yesterday, I just, I thought about it. And Bozik had mentioned this the other day. He's like, Johnny, you know, put it on a, a you know, the, the Ennis Strat is already awesome. Put it on, on something else. And I just happened to have, this is basically just like a, a mutt Strat that I threw together. Different neck, different, everything is just like tossed together. Okay. And there's, there's uh there's, <laughs> I didn't uh, stick mine on, uh, but uh, this would actually do nicely with. Uh, I've got three of them now, so I've got uh, I've got uh, the gold one for the that strat that you see up there, but there's mine. Cool. And I've got the I've got the light lighter, the black ones on mine. Oh, cool! Yeah, it's great. I love it. I mean, what's yeah. cool about this is you can go up, you can go down, you can go any direction you want, and it just stays in tune, man. It's amazing. Yeah, they're 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 great. They're awesome. But yeah, Bozik, you are right, man. I turned a totally piece of crap guitar into now like something awesome. I can't stop playing. I can't stop playing this thing. I'm actually now I'm thinking, oh, I, I gotta upgrade these pickups. This is a guitar fetish assembly, where, whereas this whole thing was like all you know one thing. I got back in the mid 2000s somewhere. 
and this is going into this um, one. So it's another chrome one, and it's going into this. So this is a decent, you know, this is a $1,200 guitar. It's a decent two-point Fender bridge. So wait a minute. So are you, you're going to have to dowel. You're going to no. have to... What those 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 points those no nope. bridge those bridge uh what are they oh are you talking are they about wood here no what are you talking about the 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 bridge the the bridge posts no no it drops right in it's made to fit in here it's no are the it. yeah okay this is a two point standard type trim bridge and fender and this is this is made you're gonna have to unscrew them right though, the posts oh, yeah. you're gonna have to yeah are, are, are they go do they go out. directly into the wood or are no, there no. are there bushings this whole thing goes out and and it goes directly right but those the posts the two posts oh, that that I bridge are, are against I think it goes into those posts i think i think it's made to go into that are there bushings so. under there um good question there are bushings under there and i think it does i think it is made to go directly into that so that's why you have the difference between the two you have Either the one for the two point or the uh, six six screw. Okay. So okay. It, it comes. It is a sick fender. Yeah, I think you probably use the same screw that's on this bridge, and you basically just put this in place, and you put that that in place. Right. And you know, it just works like this. It's a it's like a fulcrum kind of a thing. Yeah. Very simple. Very simple. So it has a blade. Mm hmm And it's like a fulcrum. Mm hmm Are you gonna do a live install on Sunday? I'm gonna do Sunday? a live install on Sunday, man. Live Do it in the bushes. <laughs> yeah, do it in the bushings. <laughs> Have you ever done it in the bushings? Summer camp, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. R two, we'll happen. see we'll see what happens. Nothing he's gonna happened. he's gonna do it live, do it live. whereas i i pre-recorded mine yeah johnny has a pre-recorded version and i don't edit videos yet i don't have time so Someday yeah. i'll have time yeah so anyway auto. yeah whenever that happens <laughs> so anyway there's a preview for for maybe tomorrow maybe i'll jam out through the 5150 through the through the brian brian spaulding uh marshall cab Maybe I'll rock this out. Sunday, definitely, on the Sunday Night String Chain show, I will be playing this guitar, showing you guys what it does. And channel members on the channel here got a sneak preview. There's a special channel member-only video what? uploaded. Actually, before we started the show tonight, that only channel members can see. Whoops. Yeah, Han Solo, exactly. I, I, the point that Han makes, that's another thing that's great about it. And so... But what Johnny found out, and I don't know how how are the uh, levels of those those saddle screws for you? Are they sticking out? Or are they bothering you? Or not at all? See, there you go. We actually we actually talked. I talked about this to somebody. I don't know who it was. That big a I don't ha I don't have any friends, so I don't know who I talked to. But somebody <laughs> was asking me about that, and and I mentioned. I said, no, mine on my because yours dig into your your palm. Mine mm -hmm. don't. So I think what that means is you need to you need to raise the uh, the action you need to raise your neck you need to shim your neck up. Oh, that's none. That's one way to do it. I see. Okay, yeah. That that's sense. one way to rock. That's one way to rock. Either that or blazing or, saddles. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I have that on DVD, David. Blazing but I, I don't even have a DVD player saddles. to watch it on. So remember blazing saddles around the campfire. Never saw it. Never saw it. That's right, that's Joe that, Hervey. A lot of that going on. I like to eat my friends. Oh, that's funny. Who, who sang? Who sang that song? I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, so tune in Saturday and Sunday. I'll be doing some Vega trimming for you guys, and look for a lot more of the Vega trim here on the uh, on the channel. And Bozik says, "All right, boys and girls, I gotta go feed the parrot." If you're still on in about 15 minutes, I'll, I I'll be back. Quick. Otherwise, I'll see you guys. Yeah, we're, we're going to call it in about 15 minutes and then have dinner and then head over to Twitch and do some GTA in for the next seven hours. So make make sure you guys tune I'll join in. join in late at night when she's sleeping, <laughs> like after 1030. Heads up. Unless she wants to watch movies till midnight again. 
I'm going to make dinner. Actually, I might actually go live and 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 make dinner, do like a, a dinner stream, like live, not here, but on, on Twitch. I might actually do that and then r roll that into GTA. I think, I think I'll do that. Or I might do that. What's might that, do what's it. What's as? Huh? Something about some kind of a Wilkinson Schaller Floyd that he has. Mm -hmm. Part 3 That's like a Fender style. You know, the one thing I've heard some people say, like one of the things, like the guy who turned me on to these <laughs> <is> RG. What's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, R2. <laughs> That's the thing, you know, I might not make it tonight. That's sometimes how it goes. <laughs> I have to say. Sounds like you're going to make it, actually. <laughs> robot, will we see you tonight, man? <laughs> yeah. I was getting trolled by Robot last night, man. He, Oh, dude, robot you don't even know this, man. I have, I have a Mach 2 now. I have oh, a, cool. a, a Repressor Mach 2. Dang. I just don't have the missiles yet. Oh. And we're talking Grand Theft Auto, you guys, yeah. which we play on Twitch every night. So, so this yeah, it was pretty, we got we had some cool, on, cool uh, moments last game. night on the game. Yeah, we, what's we fun about cool that stuff. game is it's now that it's like way old in the sense they've done all these things to try to keep it relevant and cool because they're going to be coming out with the sixth version if it's not already out, right? No, and it's the not. Thing out is, yet. Is they're they're trying to keep it relevant, so they keep giving you all kinds of cool stuff to get. Right. You know, you have to work for it you know through the game and like if you play that game every night like johnny does for at least an hour you you can get all this stuff because eventually you, you you build up i play for two i yeah. played for four yeah. hours last night wow yeah so if you do do that like even half that every night you're you're gonna build up uh some you know bank <laughs> and then you can obviously get all this crazy stuff like what johnny's getting i don't play like last in night, gta like a so. month ago yeah okay all right. Well, as we as we uh, as we uh, keep rolling, uh, Van Halen wise, last story of the night: Cece Deville fires up fans with the performance of Eddie's Eruption. I heard about did you, that. Did you did you heard about I think it? I saw that. I think I saw a video of that. You yeah. saw it? Well, apparently okay. there is a video of it. It's right there. So Cece Deville. You guys know that that Poison is back on kids. tour right now. Wait, wait, what? CC Deville. I'm I'm confusing him with the other guy. Sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, I don't know what you just said. It was weird. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, CC Poison guitarist CC Deville performs at Evan Hill's Eruption. Got a rousing response from oh, fans. Man. Actually, it was who probably more I, like this. Who am I thinking of that was on Kiss? Major, uh -huh. major, uh, anyway. major response from the audience Sunday night at Camping World Stadium in Orlando, Florida. Cece DeVille and Poison have just kicked off a summer stadium tour with Motley Crue, Def Leppard, Poison, Joan Jett, and Classless Act. If you guys watch the Tuesday night show here on Johnny Bean TV with John Mancuda and Zim's Guitars, you know, we talk about that, that tour. We talk about, I think oh, last Tuesday, the entire episode was de dedicated to that. Um, oh, okay. But now anyway. I I'm sorry. I was thinking about Vinnie Vincent. I don't know why CC and Vinny popped into the same brain space, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, but uh, anyway, CC played uh, Eruption midway through his solo, a portion of Eruption. And DeVille has been including Van Halen's music into his solos for many years. But given that this is Poison's first tour since Eddie's passing, they last toured in 2018, it made it an extra special yeah. moment for the fans in attendance. So very cool. Very cool stuff. Let's see. Yeah. I, I can't. I'm, I'm actually. I'll actually show you a screen, a screen grab if I can. Let's see. Did I zoom in? He basically, well, they they don't well. They don't zoom in, but I can zoom in. Pretty good crowd, I would say. Pretty good crowd. There, he, there he is. He basically walks out onto the under the catwalk there and basically plays plays a part of eruption. 
and very cool, very cool stuff. CC, actual dude, dude, it's such a small world, man. Let me see if I if I can find this real quick. Remember that that Van Halen guitar? Remember we were at Guitar Center. Yeah, yeah. yeah CC Deville, so. Van Halen, Kramer. Yeah. Remember we were at Guitar Center and and I brought you in and I'm like, dude, you yeah, gotta yeah, look at like, that guitar. Come here, you gotta come here, come here now. I'm like, I'm like, come check this out, man. You gotta see this. Actually, that's actually uh, on my last video that I posted last night, video number six of our tour. When you yeah. come and get me, and you say come out here, and then my battery dies right after that part. Thank God, I had enough battery. Yeah, let me see. There actually is a photo of CC playing that guitar. If I can find it, which I'm not finding it. I have it. I've had it for years and years and years. I'm, I'm not finding it. But uh, anyway, there there is a photo of CC playing this guitar. Uh, crap. Anyway, you can see part of the guitar right there. That's a little a little mock up uh, uh -huh, thumbnail yeah, yeah. I made uh, nice. earlier, but yeah, there's that's outside the G guitar center. Yeah, that guitar is actually on display at Guitar Center Hollywood. You can see it in my video, my Pasadena Van Halen trip video. You can see it in Laz's videos. But anyway, there's actually a photo of CC Deville playing that exact guitar Very cool. as there well. You go. Speaking speaking of of CC Deville from Pasadena. Hold on. That sounds like barking. That that uh, thing fell over. Hold on. Man, Hold on. your your chair sounds like a chimp. And that's the old chair. There you go. Hi. There you go. I like me. There you go. Yeah. That's the back back of the Hollywood uh, Guitar Center. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We saw that. We were there. <laughs> Big we were there. Ball. It was amazing. It was amazing. Again, there'll be a card right up there where this QR code should be. There you go. By the way, scan scan that QR code. Yeah, man. Should we do that Let's one? Do yeah, yeah, do that one. I I have actually I have a newsletter, which I, I need actually need to put more content out for that. Scan that with your smartphone, that QR code. That's for my my newsletter. So <laughs> you want to see this? Hold on. This is cool. Okay, By the go. way, that is dead air for the podcast audience. Yeah, that's the guitar right there. So there it that's is. It right there. Mm hmm Cece DeVille has actually played that guitar. Our friend Craig Parker what Adams time? has played that guitar many times. I myself one day would love to play that guitar. We should have asked them when we were there. Next time we're there, Laz. Next time we're there. Yeah. We're planning to go back, right? We'll we'll see we'll see if we can play that. We'll ask them nicely if we can play that. That'll be cool. Awesome sauce. They can only say no. <laughs> so one thing I learned is that you can ask anything you want to ask. You know, they can only say no. <laughs> it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and if you keep asking, they might say, "All right," you know. Catch them at the Jeff end of the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeff T. Jeff T. Craig. Uh, he'll be back. I don't know when. We just have to set something up. He will definitely be back. Craig Parker Adams, amazing dude. Thank you again. I still have this loaded up. Thank you again to Van Halen News Desk for featuring our, our video with Craig Parker Adams. Yeah. Jeff. Jeff, you rock, man. Um, and T-Man, was that Eddie's actual guitar? Yes, it was. It was a backup guitar. I think I think he actually had that on the 5150 tour maybe. I think it was a backup. Well, it definitely was a backup. Um but show that again real quick if if you have that right. that picture. Yeah, pull it up again. But all the wear that you see on that, that wasn't from Eddie. All the wear, all the dirt and grime on the on the neck, that was not actually from Eddie. That was from like guitar center employees playing that guitar after hours. Okay. Because I actually saw, I actually have a picture of that guitar when it was like freshly donated and it looked brand new. 
It's the truth. Everything's pretty ripped up. You're welcome, team, team man, and welcome, welcome to the the show, man. You know what was next to it? Hey, Wayne. Does anyone, does anyone know what that guitar might be? A couple giveaway things about it. Uh, I only know because I heard you mention it in your video. But who, who, uh, whose is that? We can't read that. There it says Stevie Ray Vaughan signature on there, but it's actually a Jeff Beck guitar. That says Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, do you see the signature? Stevie Ray Vaughan, and then I think it says Jeff Beck underneath it, but I'm not sure. Oh, oh, it does look like it says Stevie yeah. Ray Vaughan. See, that's the problem when, when guitars are signed right there. When people play yeah, them, it, it rubs the, <laughs> it the rubs signature off. off. Yeah. Now, that probably was just, you know, just some guitar that they signed, but, you know. I don't know. But yeah. Who knows? So but what I do know uh, is oh, right wait. time. Oh, here, this helps. <laughs> I know we were out of time, Johnny, but... Actually, technically, we could keep going forever. We'd yeah, never have to stop. Not? We never have to stop. But Focus. It says, technically, I do have dinner. I need to. Oh, I can't. On. I can't read that at all. Waiting for the dang thing to focus on it. There, it's coming. It's come. There it is. Jeff Beck and Stevie Ray Vaughan. Hey, oh, you you're go. right, man. Well, hey, hey, I didn't even notice that before. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Facebook user. Yeah, cool guitar. Amazing. Amazing. That you guys. You guys. Smash that thumbs up. Subscribe. Subscribe to the channel if you like Van Halen. This is the place you want to be. This is Johnny Bean TV. We're here every Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific, talking Van Halen. We will see you guys tomorrow night for Strategy Night Live with your host, John B.L., he Can't wait. Like this. Love that guy. John he BL. looks like that. It's cool. Tomorrow dude. night. Tomorrow night. Join us. We'll have a great time talking all things music, all things, everything, everything there is we will talk about tomorrow. We will tell you everything that you want to know about everything. <laughs> all of that. And, of course, this sun Sunday, 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 Sunday Night String Chain Show where I, I will be talking about the Vega Tram. Have an awesome thing time. thing is awesome. It is. It's awesome. So we will see you guys. See you yeah. guys later. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you to the Super Chats, the Super Chatters tonight. Thank you. False Flag was a Super Chatter. Thank you so much, False Flag. And I'm going to keep going because this has unlimited. I'm in the beta. That, a lot of things you guys don't know about me. I'm, I'm in the beta for a lot of stuff tech wise. So I get unlimited scroll. Uh, I can go. I can go back unlimitedly. Bozik. Thank you, Bozik. Even though I think he said he left. Time. Thank you, Bozik. And thank you again, Bozik. Pretty good show tonight. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought it was pretty good. Stephen Franklin, thank you, right. man. Thank you to all the supporters, uh, channel members, viewers like you. Thank you so much. We couldn't do this without you guys. You guys are, are the best. The best, Jerry. Really? Really? Awesome. Really? We're not joke. We don't joke around here. It's only going to go get better from here. We love all of you. I'll see you guys on Twitch later. Maybe I'll, I'll make some dinner. And then definitely GTA. Laz will be there. It'll Join be us. Join us. Thank you so much, channel members, for all your continued support on the on the channel here. You guys are, are just awesome. And again, yeah, you. you you get uh, a special video. Check out the special channel member only video uploaded today. You will you will definitely enjoy that. And don't forget uh, merch. There's Johnny Bean merch. We got merch. hats, we got mugs, we got t-shirts, we got onesies, we got stickers, all kinds of stuff. Thank you again to Cobra Kai Platoon 
for your amazing artwork. Grab a t-shirt. Laz has one. Yeah, apparently, I need a new hat. apparently I'm wearing one. There you go. So soft. Ugh, I can just hug myself all day. It's, it's so cozy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lonely. I got the bright orange one. All right. Like that. We love you right. guys. We love you guys. Grab some merch. Yeah, we do love you guys, really. Very true. We're not, we're not joking. Janice Lala stayed home. Janice is here. Thank you so much, Janice. Very Janice, cozy. Glad she stayed home. And we're glad that you hung out with us, Janice, because we know you're going through some tough stuff, you know. And we hope, uh, and everyone in the chat I know, hopes that you're doing all right. And just hang out with us, you know. That's We're here to keep you company and... Yeah, it's yeah. one of the best things about the, this show and this this like group of people here. You could call it a community, call it whatever, but it's it's a great great you know group of people that are supportive of each other, and that's really cool. That's right, that's right. And breaking news: Wayne says he's doing an EVH black and white seventy eight replica from an old style Fender in a seventies neck, and do it. Uh, what and do it without a floyd rose he's putting on a brass nut what pickup would sound bad blank ah uh, dude there's so many there's so many there's so many great pickups uh i think seymour duncan actually has something a 78 we mm -hmm. actually met uh mj, yeah, MJ was at, the there. NAM, at the nam yeah. show talked to tom and he didn't know I don't know who that is, but um, let's Ask see. Ask MJ. Re really quickly, MJ from Seymour Duncan makes awesome pickups, and I'll show you a picture if I can find one uh, while we're trying to end the show. There we go. Well, there's me. There's me and MJ right there. There you go. There we are. Awesome. Find an awesome selfie. I still have to post all this stuff. I I, I have so much stuff from Nam. I'm po I'm slowly posting for you guys it's, it's every day. Ridiculous. Every I day there's there's new videos. I probably have another month's worth of videos that I'll be posting. So to keep it tuned in right here on Johnny Bean TV. Johnny's way and ahead of me on that. I've been having a hard time trying to keep up with that. Here we go. Right. Here's my MJ shot. Oh, let me get this out of the way. There's Laz and MJ. Right <laughs> she's there. So and I remember she said, she's like, tag me, tag me. Yeah, and yeah. you post it. So, so MJ. Yeah, we got to do that. We'll right? be, we'll be tagging you. We'll be tagging you. All right. Rock on dudes. See you guys on, on Twitch on. in a little bit. You guys rock. Johnny That's Bean. Johnny Bean TV. Wayne says he'll post it when finished. Uh -huh. Awesome. We'll see you guys later. Like, share, subscribe. Bye. Hey, everybody. I'm this guy, David Olson. We are at Summer Nam in Anaheim, and we are watching Johnny Bean TV.